morning, everybody. Good morning. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from Jesus Christ, his Son, our Lord. I am so glad that you're here, and I'm glad to be here with you. It's an exhilarating weekend. To our friends from every corner of Colorado who are here, thank you for coming, and especially for all of those who come from as many as 40 states, from coast to coast and border to border, may I say, welcome to paradise. It is good to have you with us. Thank you for coming. I particularly want to acknowledge our sponsors, those who have provided the financial support to make this uh, wonderful weekend possible. Thank you for doing that. Their names are in the program. You've seen them on the screen. They really are deserving of our, of our thanks and appreciation. We could not put on this conference without that kind of support, and we're thankful for it. I don't know about you, but I have found it just absolutely uh, an energizing experience to hear these wonderful speakers, the men and women who are running for President of the United States, Rick Santorum, Mike Huckabee, all the rest, Rick Perry. Uh, you know, on our first evening, we heard from uh, Rafael Cruz, and I must admit, after hearing him, I wanted to draft him to run for president. Wasn't he great? And of course, uh, the great Ben Carson, Carly Fiorina, Scott Walker. I'm indebted to uh, all of them, especially indebted, as uh, others have already said, to those who have produced this program, Jeannie Edwards, Kerry Bram, Antoinette Smith, supremely to uh, John Andrews, who is the, the master planner, organizer, and moderator of this uh, event, and I am especially grateful to John that he did not suggest that I get up to make a talk right after Louis Gohmert last night. But by the time he finished, and then that congressman from Florida came out, I was laughing so hard I thought I was going to blow a gasket. It was a wonderful, wonderful experience. Uh, perhaps for me, the highlight of this event has been the students, uh, some of whom you've seen up here on the uh, platform. And I, I must say I'm filled with pride at the way they present, at the way they look, at their poise, at their grasp of the issues, and all that went into it. Uh, and especially the young conservative leadership uh, conference group, the high school students who are here and have been with us all week long on campus and now who have been with us this weekend for the Western Conservative Summit. Our chapel speaker this morning said something that I intended to say, but I'm just going to say it again. He was absolutely right in suggesting in the aftermath of three of the worst Supreme Court decisions in the history of American jurisprudence, we should remember what God has told us. If my people, who are called by my name, will humble themselves and seek my face and confess their sins, then I will hear from heaven and forgive their sins and heal their land. I thank him for saying that. I want to add just a postscript. I just want to say that it is in my heart that this is a time when we ought to begin to pray specifically for the United States Supreme Court, for the institution of the court, and for the individual members. They bear a tremendous responsibility. Uh, they are men and women who are under a great deal of uh, pressure. Uh, for the sake of their souls and for the future of our country, let us pray for the U.S. Supreme Court. As we do so, thank you Kathleen and others, as we do so, of course, we will be fulfilling the uh, recommendation of St. Paul, who said, pray for those in positions of authority over us. Of course, incidentally, we will also be filling, fulfilling the command of our Lord Jesus, who said, you know what I'm going to say next, pray for those who persecute us. It is our duty. It should be our joy. Let's do that. Let's do that. Let's pray for... And while we're at it, we might as well pray for uh, others in positions of authority who sometimes seems to be tormenting us a little bit. Now then, let's think about the exploits of Larry Walters. Does anybody in the room remember Larry Walters? A lot of blank stares out there. Let me start from a different point. Do you all read the newspaper? Who reads the newspaper? I didn't ask if you agreed with it. I just said, do you read it? OK. Who can tell me what was on the front page of the morning newspaper on July 3rd, 1982? Anybody? 
Oh, how quickly they forget. On July 3rd, 1982, there was the picture on virtually the front page of virtually every newspaper in America of uh, a man by the name of Larry Walters because of a colossally stupid thing he had done the day before. Larry Walters was a truck driver. He lived in North Hollywood, California, and as he drove his truck up and down California making deliveries, his heart and his mind was in the air. He had the dream of aviation. He thought about, he, he drove a truck, but he thought about aviation. And one afternoon, as he was seated in his backyard in North Hollywood, California, he was looking up into the sky and watching the airplanes coming in to land at LAX, Los Angeles International Airport. And that's when he got a brilliant idea. And so he went down to the Army surplus store and bought lengths of rope, which he cut to an appropriate dimension, and a tank of helium, and 45 weather balloons. He went home, and the first thing he did is he tied down the chair, tied it to the ground. And then he began to inflate the balloons, and one by one, tied them using the clothesline rope to a lawn chair in which he was intending to be seated. Soon he had 45 of them, and the chair, of course, is just straining, straining to lift off. Then he sat down in the chair. Well, first he went in and fixed himself a sandwich, took the sandwich and, and, a, and a BB gun and, and sat down in the chair. And then with a knife he had brought along, he cut the restraint that held the chair to the ground. Now, I have no way to know what he thought was going to happen. He, he, he might have assumed that that chair was going to gently float into the skies, but it didn't. With 45 of those balloons full of helium, it went up like a rocket, and in a very short time, he was at 17,000 feet. Can you imagine the pilots flying by and seeing a man in a, <laughs> in a lawn chair and then, and then calling into the airport and saying, LAX, this is flight so-and-so. I'm sorry to tell you there's a man here in a lawn chair with weather balloons. And of course, the tower replied, we know that, we've already heard about that. And of course, uh, the FAA wanted to revoke uh, Larry Walter's license, but of course he didn't have a license. And this went on for a little while, and then sooner or later he finally did come down. He escaped serious injury. His chair came to rest next to a power line with some of the, some of the clothesline ropes hanging across the electric lines, shorting out the power to several hundred thousand residents of the area. For this, he got his picture in the paper. For this, he got an award uh, from a, a service club who declared that he was the bonehead of the year. And, of course, he was on all kinds of television programs. Johnny Carson was popular then, and he was on the Johnny Carson Tonight Show. And finally, somebody thought to ask him, what were you thinking about? You have done what is arguably the dumbest thing a human being ever did, what prompted you to do it? And he said, well, a man just can't sit around. <laughs> a man can't just sit around. Words to live by, friends, and I'll tell you this. At Colorado Christian University, we don't think it's a time in our personal life or our national life to sit around. A man can't sit around. A woman in these times cannot just sit around. And we're teaching our students that God is calling us to raise up, to help to raise up a generation of men and women to step into the shoes of William Wilberforce and Patrick Henry and Florence Nightingale and Susan B. Anthony and Clarence Thomas and Ronald Reagan and Rick Santorum and Carly Fiorina and John Andrews and, and so many others. This is a time when we need our most outstanding men and women to be filled with dedication and energy to lead our country in a more wholesome, more thoughtful, more godly direction and restore not only the Christian principles of our nation, but the, the founding political and constitutional principles of the United States of America. There aren't many colleges and universities who've taken on this challenge, but a few years ago, the Board of Trustees of Colorado Christian University adopted a statement of strategic objectives, quite different than most schools would do for a couple of reasons. First of all, because it is a very specific 
set of objectives. These are not broad generalities. Our first strategic objective, and these were published, by the way, they've been published in many places, but they were in a magazine that was distributed to you on the first day of this conference. Our first strategic objective is to honor Christ and share the love of Christ on campus and around the world. This year, our students will be in 20 foreign countries and also in missions throughout the United States, and our alumni will be in 20 more as missionaries working in international business and politics, in the military service, and otherwise. Our second strategic objective is to teach students to, this is really countercultural, teach students to trust the Bible, live holy lives, and be evangelists. Now, they are not going to get that on nationwide TV. They're not going to get it from the movies. And frankly, they're not going to get it at very many colleges and universities anywhere in the world. We really believe this is just crucial. We're calling our students, our graduates, and our faculty and staff to live on a plane that is well above the cultural norm. Trust the Bible, live holy lives, and be evangelists. Then we have a series of educational objectives having to do with uh, uh, the quality of our programs, uh, our academic programs. Uh, we want to teach students to think for themselves. Uh, we want them to be able to express themselves clearly and vividly. And you've heard some of our CCU students, and you can tell they really have learned how to do that. And then we have a series of controversial cultural objectives. It is our objective, it is the official policy and objective of Colorado Christian University to influence our culture in support of traditional values, the sanctity of life, a biblical understanding of human nature, and therefore a preference for limited government rather than expansive government, for free markets rather than regimented markets, for compassion for the poor, for Western civilization, and the original intent of the United States Constitution. Yes, you did hear that right. It is and has been for a number of years an objective of CCU to foster appreciation and support for the original intent of the Constitution. And on a weekend like this, at the conclusion of a terrible series of decisions in the Supreme Court, I can't think of anything more appropriate than for us to recommit and renew our pledge to the original intent of the Constitution. Well, these are unusual objectives, first because they're specific, and second because, frankly, if uh, most colleges and universities were to make a declaration in specific terms on these subjects, they'd be on the opposite side of most of these issues. Uh, at CCU, we say Jesus is Lord. At many schools, they say Jesus is a joke. We say the Bible is infallible, inerrant. At many schools, they'd probably say the Bible is irrelevant, and so on. And uh, so far as I know, there isn't any other college or university anywhere in the world that has pledged itself to the kind of cultural reforms that we're undertaking. You might ask, well, how's this turning out? Honestly, just great. Colorado Christian University is soaring. Uh, at a time when most colleges and universities find their enrollments to be flat or down, our enrollments have grown steadily every year. On our main campus, we were at 820 or 830 students a few years ago. Last fall, we were at 1180. This fall, we're going to be at 1200, maybe at 1250. In the meantime, our College of Adult and Graduate Studies has grown from 2200 students to 4700 students, and I believe it will be 6000 at least by this time next year. Tremendous growth, and at the same time, the academic standards of the university are rising rapidly. The American Council of Trustees and Alumni did a survey of 1,070 colleges and universities around the, the country, Ivy League schools, Christian schools, the Big Ten, you name it, and they looked at the core curriculum of each of these schools. And on the basis of the core curriculum, they awarded each school a letter grade. Out of 1,070, they gave the letter grade of A, to exactly 21 schools. Colorado Christian University, probably the smallest school in their, in their universe, was one of those. There are two in Colorado, the United States Air Force Academy and Colorado Christian University. And in the other 49 states, there's exactly 19 other such schools. Our academic standards are rising. Uh, we started a, a debate team three years ago, and so far, we have won two national championships in three years. 
And on the day that we were winning the national debate championship, on that very day, our men's basketball team was winning the National Christian College Men's Basketball Championship. And a few days earlier than that, our women's basketball team had won the Rocky Mountain Athletic Conference Basketball Championship. I'm glad to report to you that we are operating in the black from operations. I want to say a word about philanthropy, but not considering philanthropy. By the grace of God, we are able to pay our bills and even make a small profit from operations. We're building new buildings. In fact, if you haven't been to our campus lately, please come. We already have one magnificent, wonderful, efficient, terrific building up and running. We dedicated it last September, Leprino Hall, classrooms and offices. Our second new building uh, will uh, be completed, we think, in about four weeks and will house 300 students in a wonderful new residential facility on Alameda Avenue. Building number three, we hope to break ground. There's still a few details we've got to work out, including uh, permitting and how we're going to pay for it and a few other miscellaneous details. We hope to break ground on December 20th. And our fourth new building, we hope to break ground for on January 4th. How can this be? How can one of the smallest universities in America be doing all of these things? Well, it, it is in part because we have a wonderful board of trustees, and I, I thank them. I bless their name. They are great. We have a very able faculty. We've got rock stars. We've got a great staff. But I don't think you can account for the success of Colorado Christian University in primarily human terms. It is my conviction when I think of the success we've enjoyed beyond anything that is reasonably to be expected under the circumstances. It's the intervention of, of God himself. I can almost hear him saying, and I am not hearing voices, but I can almost hear him say, I will show the world what I will do for a university that honors me. And so that's our strategy, is to honor him and and throw ourselves into the battle for the soul of the United States of America. We're not going to sit around. We're going to follow Larry Walter's advice. We're going to be on the go. We're not going to be spiritual or cultural or political or civic or economic couch potatoes. We tell our students, and I would charge all of you, this is a time to be strong and very courageous, to be bold, to be creative, to be brilliant, to be the salt of the earth. May I ask as you depart that you pray for our university. If you know young men and women who would be uh, good prospects to be students for us, please send them to us. If you have an opportunity to do so, I'd be very grateful for your financial support. But supremely, lift us up in prayer. Uh, we've got great opportunities, more than we can handle. And uh, with your help, we're going to rise to the challenge ahead. Be bold, be brave, be creative, be the salt of the earth. God bless us all. Thank you.